Hello and welcome. Today we're going to take a look at this licensed product by Hasbro, which is a three-pack G.I. Joe set. Now, the reason why I started off that way is because they are now using Lego for the new Optimus Prime that is currently out. They used to use this company beforehand because this company also did minifigure scale transformers. But this is all to do with G.I. Joe. So this is a 2015 SDCC exclusive. That stands for San Diego Comic-Con. You've got three-pack on the outside. You've got minifigures on the one side, minifigures on the other, and then you have the actual build itself you've got plenty of box artwork to look at and on the other side you've then got the opportunity to have it in on that bit so what we're going to do as normal we're going to take a good look at the box artwork we're going to take everything out strip it all down get it built and then we can actually then see how it compares with the actual lego minifigures themselves so as we start off with sergeant slaughter and this amazing box artwork the actual name of this thing is called an sdcc 2015 hasbro exclusive Creo G.I. Joe Construction Commando. That is exactly what that is called. It is an absolute tongue twister. In fact, it's called Construction Commandos because there's obviously more than one of them. Now, on the outside of the box artwork, like they do with all of the toys, you have got all of these different bits and pieces here written down. So it tells a story. So it starts off with here where it says G.I. Joe is the code name for America's highly trained special mission force. And then as we pan around, you can see just how nice that looks within the box artwork. Now, if we try and get a little bit creative and clever, if I spin this round and then pull this back, we will then see the villain. So you have got the pimp daddy himself. That is what I've been told to say. And then on the inside just here, you can see you've got just basically an empty box. So that's a, a real nice thing. So you can make a nice nice display out of all of these. And as we start to stand these boxes up, you'll see what I mean. So you've got Destro on that side. And then on, on here, you have got Sergeant as well. And then that is obviously what we had as the middle of the box. But if we were to then spin this round and slide this back over again, this is actually the main build. So this is your triple T. It's 140 pieces. It says in brackets, weapons do not shoot. And it has a tag team terminator. So I'm not 100% sure what that actually means, but you're gonna have to let me know in the comments below. And on the back, this is what this also looks like so again you've got some really nice artwork on here just with regards to what this thing's going to look like now don't forget these are brand new to me so the seals have yet to be broken so it is completely brand new so i'm going to rip this open in a minute and then we can have a very very good look now with regards to just the box artwork i think you can get some really nice photos and displays now they are supposed to be based on old vhs's so that's exactly what this is so you can get a really nice display and they like i said they did do these for all of the Transformers minifigures of their own version. So on the back of each one of these, you will have one for the Cobra and one for Slaughters, and you can see who is included in who. So as we come round and come down, you will have all of the different bits and pieces at the bottom. So you can see you've got Destro as the leader, and then you've got the Iron Grenada, you've got the uh, three Iron Grenaders, but you've got one elite officer, two elite troopers, and then you've got a driver and the general. And then over on this side, it says you've got the canine handler, you have got Barbecue Kelly, you've got Iron uh, Iron Knife, Low Light, Footloose, and then you've got Sergeant as well. So you've got six figures in each. So if you're wondering what I'm going on about, hopefully one of these will just slide open. We'll have a better look towards the end of the video. All of these are still brand new. And they've got all the weapons and everything on the inside, but we'll take a look at them towards the end of the video. I think that's all the box artwork covered. We'll have a bit of a better look right at the very, very end. But what I'll do now is I'll get this thing ripped open. I'll get this built, and then we'll get all the minifigures out of it, and then we're gonna see what we're gonna do with this canoe. Right, I've cut it ever so slightly. I wanna try and open this up without actually destroying the box, because I would quite like to use this. It's not something that I will be, I normally do, because I usually recycle all the boxes, but I wanna probably keep this on displays. I'm not gonna use all the minifigures. I don't think so what is on the inside so we have got hopefully no stickers that looks like that's a really nice print for the sergeant slaughter for the front what else do we have in here that is the second bag then we have got the instruction box so how does this compare to a lego manual because normally in a lego manual you have all the information at the front and then you have all the bricks and pieces at the back so you've got the two teams then it by looks like you've got the tank, which would be the build itself. Then what do we have? So we've got a little bit of a bio of the minifigures. So that is Sergeant himself. So he's a drill instructor. I do like how they've used the brick artwork on the back. So that'd be quite cool if you could sort of just make up like a stand, like everybody does with their own minifigures and just have that as the backdrop. I think that'll look quite smart. So that is Sarge. We've seen him a few times. He's obviously the main main happy chappy just there and then as we come through we'll have a look at all of the other minifigures and their names so you've got the spirit iron there he is on that side then we're coming through on this side you have got footloose myers over onto the next page you've got low light 
He's a cool looking character. And then again, you have got Mutt and Junkyard. So I do believe there might be little puppy dogs to put together. There it is, just down at the bottom. That's a sweet looking thing. And then you've got Barbecue Kelly. And obviously this is all the blue team. Now I do believe some of these are actually just coming out available in the six inch form. I know that's nothing I touch on, but if you make your way over to Jay's Toy Collections UK or Dan Who You Reviews, there are a lot more intellectual people than I am with regarding GI Joe. But starting with the enemy, and this is code name Destro. So over on this side, I would like to see just how shiny his actual forehead is when we finally open up this set and have a look at those minifigures on the inside. You can see by the looks of it, he's got his cape and you've got to put all the different weapons and everything together for him on there. And then we've got a couple of the other team. These look completely different. So a real bright pink, vibrant top on that one. Nice green on that one. He's got a cool face print, hopefully, with regards to the red and the green eyes as well. Like I said, we will be taking a better look at these in hand, but it is a little bit easy using the instruction manual. And then you've got a matching pair of the Grenada Trooper and the Grenada Officer. And then that is all of them put together. But what else do we have in the booklet? So that is the Triple T. So we're starting on page 12. Where does the build finish? Now on the back, it says join the battle with the Cobra and the Creo G.I. Joe building set. Now I know there is more of these available, um, but they are very, very difficult to get hold of. But if you'd like to see some more of these vehicles and just have sort of some weird and wonderful display, I can do because obviously Lego Group are not going to be doing this uh, G.I. Joe because obviously with regards to what it's related to, so it's nothing that I'm going to be able to get under the Lego license. Now over this side, they have got all of the spare bricks. So you can see that they have all the spare pieces. So if you're ever missing anything, each one, just like a Lego instruction, booklet has everything named and they've even got the different lego heads with different numbers so one lego head or one construction head shall i say is k100808 and then the only problem is with that is that they have used the same code for all three different types of print that's not exactly the most ideal thing but never mind it is what it is and then coming through we will finish the build on page 41 and it looks like it is step 62 when you put the tracks on what i'm going to do now is get this thing built and then we'll take a look at all of the minifigures and just like that it is done and built and it's a cool little thing easy enough to put together but about 10 maybe 15 minutes now it moves all okay tracks are a little bit stiff but you know you can do a little bit of weight on there it's absolutely fine it does come with the dog so you actually do have to put the dog together we'll leave them in the canoe for now now the cool thing is is that it is all tiles there are no stickers now. you've got to be very very careful with is that there are no spare pieces whatsoever so every single brick that was in that bag that we saw got used on this build so if you do knock anything off or you aren't a collector and don't have spare pieces you've got to be very very careful and um, because obviously some of these pieces will be quite difficult to get because i don't think they make this kind of thing anymore but with regards to the scale you can see just how many studs it is just underneath it's nice and wide as well so i will start comparing this just to some other random vehicles towards the end like we normally do now what we will do is we will move on to the minifigures very very quickly because it is very very hot in here today so just go hands free for a second now we want to have a look at this team just here and we want to see exactly what these things are like now the reflection i know is going to be a bit of a nightmare but if i can i will try and open these up as carefully as i possibly can might they have used a serious amount of tape on here, but how do they slide off? As long as it's not all stuck down, and if I can use the cards for whatever reason I will, if they get ripped, then I won't, because I can't just slide the, can't just slide the card out. Did I save it? Yes, I think so. So we've got the card on the back, and they're still in something. So how do you get into these? Right, so all the pieces are gonna fall off. There we go, so that is what they look like in person. So that is all of the minifigures just there. I'm not gonna take them out. So that is what he looks like with his super, super shiny head. And he does, does he have his cape on him? Yes, it looks like the cape's already there. So it just, in the instruction booklet, it just showed you how to how to put them in. So we'll get that one out. I do like the pink as well. I think that pink's a really, really nice, vibrant pink. And even the orange is 
very very bright with the red at the bottom obviously the ones at the the ones at the very very bottom all the black and the red they're just sort of more basic sort of prints on them but there's nothing nothing that's outstanding on those whereas these you can see that it stands out nicely on the green the red and the orange hopefully it's coming through clearly enough and then i think the pink is very very vibrant and then you've got the mr gold as well so if i can let's just see again big difference with what these are like to get out so the first one to come out there we go so what's he like head pop off yeah so head pops off arms you can rip them off if you want to it's just basically you've got a little bit more flex than a lego minifigure so you can just punk them out to the side and again you can see just how nice that one looks like with regards to the print now if i just grab the closest minifigure that i've got so we will use this one just here because come well, on He's right beside me. So this is from the Ninjago set. You can see they are literally alike for like with regards to height. So they do work absolutely perfectly side by side. Also, they do look a little bit different. But with regards to scale, I think they scale absolutely fine. And then if I take the top three off, just so you can see with a little bit better on the colour, because this is the one that I want out the packet, which is this one just here. So you can see he has got his weapon at the front. How easy can you get him to stand up? Bear in mind, this is on a slippy table and it's not a base plate that you'd normally put them on. Uh, you will see in a second how easy they stand on the base plates. But yeah, super, super shiny. And you can see you've actually got the print on his arm. You've got the little cape on the back, which will all sort out. And then there's not much going on on the back. But it's a nice, it's a nice looking thing. Now, with regards to swapping these over for this, for this, how well does this pop in? So that I have to really push. You can see how hard that grips in. So I can throw that about with this one and then obviously punk them out. Whereas this one, well, it just slots in and slots back out again. So there's there's going to be slight differences with regards to it all and how the quality of it and everything else like that is. But at least they are to the scale, which is really, really good. And you've obviously got with him as well, you have got other weapons and things that you can put together. So inside this pack, you've got all sorts of different weapons for every single character, which obviously I don't need. So I will just be putting all those back. Now, the other test that we want to do is first thing first, how well do they stand on the base plate? So there you go, look, no problem. It's taking the whole taking the whole 16 by 16 base plate with them, so that's brilliant. And then obviously the next test, which is what we're really interested in, is how easy will it be to sit down in the canoe? So we just plonk that one in like so to get his weapon out of the way. Will he sit? Yes, he will. So he is in and he's in sturdy enough so let's keep him just in there we'll give him one of these so we can figure out in a second exactly where i'm going to be putting these in the display so we will make a we'll make a thing of that but yeah there you go so it all it all grabs on so if you want to sort of mix and match it in your display you can do so that's a nice that's a nice thing so they're stuck in there they're stuck in there well now we'll leave that one just on here we'll get this side open as well so just have a look with these. With regards to who's in there, we've already had a look through at all of them. So these, there's nothing really outstanding on these with regards to like the colours. They're all very, very similar. So they're all your the browns, greens and blues. There's nothing that sort of pops out like these three. So I would say that out of any of the minifigures, these three are more eye-catching. That's what I mean by outstanding, as in the colours stand out, not their outstanding minifigures. But you can see that they do look really, really smart together and all of them go on that base plate absolutely fine but you can pose these a little bit easier i would imagine than the lego minifigures because you can obviously tip them over to the side and do whatever it is that you want to do with them because you have got the extra joint mobility on the leg which is obviously what the lego minifigures don't have right what i'll do is i'll get these open and then we'll have a look at sarge so it's just about to tidy up to make some space before we got Sarge out, and there's another difference. So you've only got the one pin on the inside, so the torso actually came off really, really simple. So I actually just pulled him up by the torso, and the legs actually got stuck to the inside. So all I did was, I, instead of pulling him from the middle, I pulled him a little bit higher up, and there you go, look. So it actually does come apart, so that 
isn't the greatest and the more i'm doing that the less and less they get is tightening off so you haven't got much life i wouldn't imagine if you're sticking them onto something that's solid obviously if you did it just with the one leg it will it will come off but again something to gain consideration because obviously when you start mixing and matches brands you don't want to crack the plastic on either or but i put these back we'll get sarge out and then we'll go from there so Sarge came out absolutely no problem. I've not ripped the packaging on that. So again, that's what that looks like quickly, but I'm putting that back. And the cool thing is, if you get that, if you don't destroy the box, it will, he says, just slot straight back in and it won't eat up into any more room. So that is exactly how it went in, as is that one as well. So hopefully when we've finished, if I just need to tuck that bit of plastic back under it in itself, it will then fit all back in here. So a quick size comparison with the current Indiana Jones stuff. So we've got the car and the plane to use scale. And I don't know how big this triple T is supposed to be. So you guys and girls are going to have to fill me in the comment section below. But I think the car against the tank works all right. Because they're, they're, they're about the same width. But obviously the car has too many figures in. Well, so clearly the tank only has the one. But I think the plane scales really well with the tank. So if you wanted to set up some sort of display with the plane chasing it over, then you're absolutely laughing. You can see visually the car is ever so slightly longer. But it's there or there about eight studs wide each, I think think is the size of those so i don't know the exact length of both but obviously the tank is a chunkier vehicle but side by side i think they look absolutely fine minifigure for the gi joe is in there you've got to be careful when you take that out so obviously you don't want to be cracking the plastic on the actual minifigure or on the actual seat itself but the uh, tiles by the way are ridiculously bright but i don't think it justifies it through the camera however it is now time to hide these two minifigures in my own display so i'm going to hide them in the theme park somewhere on one of the rides so i think it's only right that we spin it around and we actually add them to the Rivendell wrappers display so this is all under construction on this bit so we've got all of the lego sets behind me wrapped around in one big theme park but if we plonk it just on here that way i can actually then lift up this base plate we can have them going down into vertical drop if need be so i can place them up wherever so they can be hidden all over the place around my actual display or they can just stay there and then we can just have it coming through and down and it'd be nice and simple but obviously i will need to add in the little dog and if i can i'll also add in the tank as well but i think they work there but that is it i am done so if you can like this video and subscribe to the channel that'd be absolutely fantastic in the comments below let us know if you've got any of this brand construction set or if you've got any of the other gi joe construction sets if so what ones do you have but guys as always thank you very much for watching you lot take care and i'll catch you next one Ta -da.